Is he clean or does he have a girlfriend? If this is your husband, DM me on Instagram because I have pictures, I have proof, and this was just a very odd thing to see. Stay safe out there, girls. So I sent that to his girlfriend and then she left him and then I blocked him. And this is why we need that app I just talked about where we can leave reviews of guys we've dated on Hinge. The fact that more than one girl in my comments has said, oh, hey, by the way, if you're gonna start dating in Dallas, make sure you join the Are We Dating the Same Guy Dallas Fort Worth Facebook page. <laughs> As if dating isn't fucking hard enough. I'm like having a fucking out of body experience right now. We should all just take a good look in the mirror and like understand like, like what's happening. <laughs> What I was trying to say is this situation got me so wet and so, so dry at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> What's up, bitches? Welcome back to another episode of So Wet, So Dry. I'm one of your hosts, Fiji, like the island, like the water. I really suck at setting boundaries and I work in social media and marketing. And I'm your other host, Autumn, like the season. My all black outfit today very much represents how I feel inside. And I work in entertainment. If you guys are new here, tuning in for the first time to So What So Dry, what we do is we explore duality through deep diving topics about sex, relationships, personal identity, all where internet trends and reality collide. So we post polls for every single episode that we put out, give y'all an opportunity to submit a story, question, what have you. Make sure you guys are following us on Instagram at so wet, so dry, the O's, R's, zeros to be a part of that. And whatever you guys are doing right now, please subscribe, follow whatever platform you're on. Give us a like, drop a comment if you like it and want us to keep going. We would love that. Any way you guys can interact with our content truly is just amazing. Yes, and today we are talking about the viral Are We Dating the Same Guy Facebook group. We're talking about the controversy, the legal cases. We're going to get into a little bit of internet sleuthing, and we're also going to talk about whisper networks and the Me Too movement just a little bit. But before we get into all of that, we're going to start the episode as we always do, talking about what we're so wet and so dry about in this very moment. So I will go first I'm so wet because I've been learning how to like clap my ass and like throw it in a circle my friend Lo shout out if she's listening was giving me lessons right before I broke my ankle but I haven't been able to practice because you know my ankle was broken but while yeah. I was getting ready I just had to you know I'm, I'm trying it like it's definitely like clapping like it's moving it's just not really on rhythm and Lo was like you don't have to follow the words. You could just follow like the beat. And I'm like, that's just such a like, yeah. So I'm working on it. No, bro. But you, what you sent me looks good. Like, I feel like you, I feel like sometimes like the rhythm can be the hardest part because you're thinking so hard about where your knees got to be yes. and how your well, my back legs is. go like this because well, yeah. one, I'm like leaning over. I'm doing the one where you lean over. So it's like easier and you're like on your right. toes. Love that. But like what on I'm your toes on, is so easy. So much, so much easier. But and in stripper heels. On, yeah. Is like shorter than yeah. me. So it's like my legs look funny because they're so long. Right. So I need a better like mount. But no, you know. I swear, like, I feel like I can do it pretty good. Like, when there's a pole, I have something yep. to hold on to, yep. and it's just all that energy. But in terms of, like, me going to the club and, like, doing it, Without I don't think circus? I could do it. Yeah. Just, like, freehand. And get, <laughs> I get tired so quick. Like I know. It's, it's a huge workout, bitch. Ugh, yeah. Well, so I love much. that for you. I definitely want to practice, too, honestly. Um, I'm so wet because my mom's visiting this weekend. I'm just excited to see her. Um, she does like live in Boston, but a big part of her work is based in California. So it's for work, but like she's coming to stay with me and I'm yes. just so excited. Miss her. 
And yeah, it's going to be literally just healing and amazing. And You're going to go out to eat. That's so fun when they cover the check. You and I'm like, Mom, can you take me to like the grocery store? <laughs> yes. Like they love to pick up supplies and make sure you're good. Like when I had first right. moved to it, like not to Atlanta, but like to my condo, like my mom was visiting and I was low key stressed, but she made me go to a thrift furniture store and get furniture. And I'm like, thank God she That's did what that. they do. Because I wouldn't have, like, she's so, like, smart. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. moms. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm so dry. This is, like, kind of, like, random and niche. But I've been, like, scrolling on Instagram, looking at all the little, like, articles, whatever. And I came across one from Days that's about this new AI invented by a woman that is called the Angry Girlfriend. And it's supposed to teach men how to develop empathy. So it simulates an angry girlfriend and they have to like respond and it's like gamifying it to like make them get points. And I want to know how you feel about this. Cause I'm kind of on the fucking fence because I'm like, in one sense, people learn different ways. Could it help? Could it be used in health classes for like younger people? Like whatever. But in the other sense, is it teaching them manipulation? It's, I don't know. It's invented by a woman. I'm confused. What do you think? I know. It's like, it's like it's an invented by a woman, but unfortunately it's like, doesn't even matter, you know, sometimes. But I think based on where we're at right now, can't hurt, honestly. Right. That's I don't think I it thinking. could hurt. Like, if they're like taking it OD seriously, like maybe just like look at it like an AI thing and like learn a little bit from it. That shouldn't be like your one tool right. to learn how to communicate with women. But like better than nothing, in my opinion. And I could see men wanting to do that more than like read a self-help book. So I'm like, right. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm honestly I'm fine with it. But we'll see, like, where it goes. Yeah. Like, is this relatively new? Like, it just it's came It's pretty out? new. And I'm also afraid that they're training the AI to be, like, sentient. Sentient. Because, like, you know, like, it doesn't have emotions, but it's learning emotional responses. I don't know. It's scary. That's but, so yeah. scary, dude. Oh, my God. That, that scares me more than the crazy girlfriend. It's just the AI becoming more like a human. Um... Yeah, I'm so dry. Definitely, like, something niche as well. Like, you guys know I love my fixation. So, moved on from Alabama Rush, and now it is um, toxic moms on TikTok exploiting their children. Like, dance moms? <sighs> exactly. Something okay. similar like that, but it's, like, these mommy and me TikTok accounts where, like, they make money off of their kids. Yes. Okay. Like and there's Logger like, moms. okay. So it's like the family channels, the boy moms. I mean, it's so much, dude. But it just like, it's so disheartening that like this is what's like, this came with TikTok. And like as a society, like we're letting these children be exploited. It's like they'll literally like hashtag toddler bath time. And like there's like millions of predators. Yeah. On the internet that like will go to like, you know what I mean? And, like, and they're monetizing their children. Before exactly. They have any, like, exactly. So I have just been I found this new um, amazing. Let me, I'm literally going to pull it up because I want to give her a shout out. I just think she's so great. It's Kiki channel. Um, and she's just this woman and she's just been covering it and being like, this should not be a thing anymore. So many people are covering it. But I just like the way she like she's very relatable yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just fucking crazy. And that's what made me like text my mom this morning and just thank her for like prioritizing my safety because these parents like really care more about money than their kids. And it's yeah. like horrifying. So yeah. that's my two cents. I'm Ooh. fucking dry as fuck about it. Um, but yeah, I almost wanted to be like, and I'm confused about, but that's the, yeah, end, no, at the end of the episode. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's get into this topic. You guys, as Fiji said, we are going to be kind of breaking down these Facebook groups. Are we dating the same guy? Um, sleuthing, like researching someone before you go on a date. Mm -hmm. We're going to touch on the me too movement and all of that. So it's going to be a big one, guys. Just Sit down, buckle your seatbelts, and get fucking ready, okay? Yes. We're going to start with, you know, how much sleuthing we do before dates and everything. So we asked you guys, when you are planning to go on a date with someone, do you do research on them? For example, stalking social media, asking people who may know them, Googling their record, etc. 79% of y'all said yes, and only 21% of y'all said no. 
And I feel like with all the access we have to research on people, this Ooh. makes so much sense to me. Yeah. It's a little bit scary. I wonder if people have done research on me before and shit. Oh, you know? definitely. Like people, <laughs> we know when we have, well, I don't have dating apps anymore, but you did. People definitely listen to the podcast, which is a little. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, it, you're right. A little iffy. Um, but yeah, and then we wanted to know what you guys are usually looking for when you're doing this sleuthing before going on a date with someone. And the one that won was I just want to learn more about them at 44%. Close behind at 31%, we have I want to make sure I would be safe with them. And then right behind it at 25%, we have I want to make sure they are who they say they are. No catfishes, no scams. And 0% said I want to know their dating history. Now, this one was a, a little tricky because we did want to put slash if they're dating other people, like if they're single, but like it cut off on Instagram, so we weren't able to ask that. I wonder if it would have been different. Yeah. I think what this says to me is the majority of people are worried about safety. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I know it's like if we worded it different, maybe, but I do think it's less about their dating history and like in terms of our listeners, not in terms yeah. of like the Facebook groups, but because it's literally it's like they are who they say they are. Um, you know, I'll feel safe with them, learn more about them. Like, I think it's a big thing about safety and like, you know, if anything's been out about them that would make them feel unsafe, you know? Yeah, like definitely people like, I don't do it as much anymore. Like, unless I'm like definitely going, well, I guess, I don't know. Cause I'll do research on like hinge dates before, like just make sure they don't have crazy political leanings. Like look at their like Instagram, like, you know, confirm they're a real person or if we have mutuals. Cause sometimes I don't want to match with people if we have too many mutuals, it's weird, yeah. I don't know. But I have, like, Googled people's records before and stuff like that online, right. too. Yeah, I've never Googled anyone's record. I also do think that, like, and I don't know if this matters, but it's, like, again, like, I've mostly just had romantic things with, like, women and stuff. So yeah. it's, like, a little bit different. Like, I feel yeah. like, honest to God, like, the research I would do on them is just, like, to see more of what they look like and, like, videos of them. Like, it was less about that but it's sad that I never looked up my like ex-boyfriends like I sh definitely should have googled his name but I didn't yeah it's good practice because I've said it before on the podcast but I did have a situation where I was seeing a guy like somewhat consistently and he had lied about what his real name was and what his record was I knew he had a record but not the extent of that record. I thought it was like yeah. a non-violent like scamming crime which there was one of those but there was also a sketchier <laughs> one else. so Okay, so going off of that, women are clearly afraid a little bit of dating men. And this shows up in this recent TikTok trend that we saw. So we're going to play that TikTok now. Would you rather be stuck in a forest with a man or a bear? Bear. Man is scary. Um, with a bear. Well, I've heard about bears. They don't always attack you, right? Unless you, like, fuck with them. So maybe a bear. <laughs> Pro depends what man, but probably a bear. 100% oh, a bear, which is like terrifying to say, but definitely a bear. Some men are very scary out there. A bear. <laughs> I would say, I would say a man. If you're a man watching this right now, please let this be the fucking wake up call because yeah. that right there is like actually terrifying for women to say that they'd rather be alone with a bear instead right. of your bitch ass. Right. That's scary. And my. My other best friend, my roommate, I live with her. She's chronically on TikTok as well. And she literally asked me the other day, like, would you rather be with a man or a bear? Not even knowing it was like a trend video. I was like, oh, a bear, because like you make loud noises. Like I know how to get rid of it. Men, <laughs> you so can't really get rid of as easily. Yeah. Yeah. See, I thought of it like my instant thought was like, I don't know why, but I was like, bears are like cute and like cuddly and I'm they could screaming, be more bitch. like they could kill my you. dog. I know they could, but I'm like, it could be Your a nice dog. bear. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like teddy bear. There are like, some bears on TikTok that like are, are nice. Like to the humans. little, have you seen the woman on TikTok that has little bear cubs? Yes, bitch. Yes, that's exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. So that's what I was thinking versus men are more unpredictable. But I also saw other TikToks where where women were asking their husbands this about their daughters. They would like, would you rather have our daughter be in the forest with a man or a bear? And the men were saying a bear too. No, that's even worse. That's like, even fucking worse. That's 
crazy, bro. Because it's like, I'm a man, so I know how we think. That's what they always say. Yes. That's psychotic behavior. It, it, my dad definitely gave that growing up. Like, yeah. he didn't want me around. Same, same. Fuck. Same. Dude. So, yeah, That's this depressing. just goes to show that women are afraid of dating men, and for good reason. Not just dating them, but being around them in general, which is a little sad because you would know, rather not be all with men. a bear. Right. You not guys all can men go are to scary. sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> But now I want to talk a little bit about the Me Too movement and Whisper Network. So essentially, we're going to get into the Are We Dating the Same Guy Facebook groups, but there's history behind them, and it kind of starts with Whisper Networks and the Me Too movement. So according to Wikipedia, a Whisper Network is an informal chain of information passed privately between people, typically women. It consists of gossip about people in a community frequently a professional community alleged of being sexual harassers or abusers. The information is often shared between women by word of mouth or online and private communities, forums, spreadsheets, and crowdsourced documents. The stated purpose of maintaining these lists is to warn potential victims of people to avoid in their industry. Whisper networks also supportedly help victims identify a common abuser and come forward together about a serial abuser. The term Whisper Network was newly popularized during the Me Too movement after several private lists were published outside of private networks. Among the published lists were the shitty media men list and the California state capital list and the Harvey Weinstein Google Doc. Karen Kelsky created a less controversial list about men in academia called Sexual Harassment in the Academy a crowdsourced survey, which had grown to over 2,000 entries by the end of 2017. It includes stories without actually naming the accused sing and accused parties. Kelsky said she hoped the list would help demonstrate the scope of sexual misconduct in the academic field, and it has resulted in the investigation of 12 men at the University of Michigan. So damn, this is like how it all started. Yeah, so essentially Whisper Networks date back so far in time, like before Me Too even, and they kind of serve this purpose of like, you know, um, academic like universities, where you work, the law enforcement does not always protect women from abusers, even when they do report it. So women kind of got together to inform other women about these abusers so that they could stay safe and aware. And there's also been some controversy, which I just want to like also touch on with these whisper networks, especially Me Too. So they have come under fire for leaving out like black women and women of color, like predominantly women. So even though, again, like feminists for women, not all women are always included in these docs. Right. So black women have created their own um, as well. And then also, so I was just thinking about it and I was thinking a lot about like strippers and sex workers because I listened to Horrible Decisions um, Double D's episode featuring Daniela Carter and Dominique Silver. So they're two trans sex workers that had a documentary come out on Hulu called Coco- Kokomo City. And it's about like the trans black sex worker experience. And they talked about a lot of the violence that they go through. And they're very like low key about sharing their contacts and stuff like that because like a lot of these men are DL and like they're powerful men. So there is that risk there. But because of the violence and so many lives lost, they did talk a little bit about like sharing things like that. And also in the show, The Girlfriend Experience, which I watched on Amazon, it's about like a woman who becomes an escort while she's also like living a double life, like being a lawyer. Um, She worked with a madame who had, like, kind of vetted these clients before meeting them, which is why a lot of people, you know, either have, like, pimps or a madam or something because they have, like, a history. And if they're an abuser, then they won't work with them, like, whatever. So, like, there's other public platforms before this that women have used in the sex work space, which I think is, like, very important. And then it also goes into, you know, corporate and everything like that. Wow, dude. And I just want to say, too, it's always, like, Like, this is, it's such a consistent thing for, like, a movement to start and then people of color having to, like, make their own. Like, that's just always, like, a thing. And I just, like, wanted to say, like, I just, like, that's so horrible. Like, I hate that. Um, But, yeah, I really need to watch that documentary. It's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's, like, at an academic level, at an interpersonal level, and then sex workers come into it. And then it's also, like, celebrities, like, with Harvey Weinstein. It's, like, 
there's so much to this. And it's kind of interesting to think about like this, like deep rooted, like systemic shit is like kind of. Like, I don't know exactly, but if it is, like, a big cause of, like, these, like, kind of superficial, like, Facebook groups. Because, like, this shit yes. is, like, real and, like, I, like, stand for that, you know? Yeah. See, that. so that's kind of what we're going to get into. Like, the connection between, I think that a lot of the Facebook groups, Are We Dating the Same Guys, stem from, like, the Me Too movement and how so many things were talked about and pop- popularized online. But it gets a little iffy because this is strictly about abusers versus the Facebook groups are like a little bit different, which we're going to talk more about in a minute. But even with these whisper networks, they come under fire a lot for just being gossip, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And so we asked you guys, how do you feel about forms of whisper network like lists of abusers? And 91% said they are necessary to keep people safe. And only 9% said they are just gossip and drama. I'm going to be real. I think that I voted for their just gossip and drama. This was before I had done all the research on the episode. But it's because, and I thought about, like, reaching out to people in Atlanta about this. Like, there is a list in Atlanta. Like, I'm very, like, in the underground scene. Yeah, Yeah, there is a list in Atlanta of abusers, um, sexual, domestic, like anything really. It's an extremely long. It's a very long list. And I want to like preface this by saying there is definitely abusers in the underground and there's definitely people who deserve to be locked up. There's women who have gone through like terrible things, all of that. I do not personally know the person who created this list or like, you know, anyone who's like advocated to have someone be added on it. But I have been aware of a lot of like drama surrounding the list and personal people that I know being like, maybe they should be put on it because of like girl fights or disagree, like just things that I don't personally think account for being on the list. And I also want to say like, I'm a survivor of domestic abuse. So like, me personally, like I did have law enforcement involved and always want it, but I never took it online. And I, I don't want to say like, so I think I'm a little bit jaded because of my own experience and because of my own desire to keep things private that like, to me, the thought of like ruining his name online was more terrifying than just like dealing with it internally. So it's a little complicated. I understand yeah. like, I don't know. Like, I've been at parties where I've had other girls be like, oh, you need to watch out for him. And I, it's been helpful, you know, because you really don't know. They're like, oh, he's on the list. So it, I'm, like, iffy about it. Like, I, I really don't know where I stand. Yeah, it's like, it then, but then you had, like, what I experienced, like, with trying to, like, suck dick in the bathroom. And those girls were like, don't do it. But it's like he wasn't, you know what I mean? So it's like there's... Well, explain that more because I don't think that, like, if they're listening for the first time, they might not know what you mean. Yeah, it's like it gets wishy-washy. Like, this, like, it wasn't, I I was sucking dick in the bathroom in Atlanta because I was having a good time and I was enjoying myself and I was embracing my sexuality. I was horny. And, like, a bunch of Fiji's, like, friends that some of them are not really cool with anymore, but they, like, were knocking on the door trying to get me out because they thought that this man was, like, taking advantage. using me and taking advantage of me. Little did they know I was running the whole show. Right. So, like, that's, like, okay, but that's different than someone coming up to you at a party and being, like, he's on the list. You know, but that's the thing. It's, like, it sucks that, like, something like this that, like, should be there to keep people safe. It's, like, we do have to question it, especially if you don't know who made the list. And just like Fiji said, like, without a doubt, there are abusers on that list. And yes. it's, like, there are a lot of men are abusers and predators, unfortunately. And it's just, like, not just in Atlanta, like, everywhere. So that's why it's, like, believable. It's, like, that's a long-ass list, but it's, like, it's probably all true, But the part about, you know, girl fights and, like, different types of, like, you know, things that you do kind of want to protect people from. But at the same time, that's very different than, like, you know, being an actual predator abuser. Well, because they would also add enablers to the list. So, like, for example, if you had hung out with someone who was on the list, list, you would become, like, an enabler on the list. Like, and, and things like that. And, like, again, like... With my own experience, I could be, like, clouded in it. And, like, healing from trauma and all of those things, There's, I don't believe there's any right way to do it. 
Um, I think like the best way would be to go to law enforcement, but like I personally didn't do that in my situation. Like law enforcement was involved, like kind of against my will at times, but I just veer more towards the side of like, you should involve law enforcement before you bring it online. Like if you are so able, if you're not, if you do that, if you bring it up at your college, if you bring it up with law enforcement and nothing happens, then yeah. bring it online. But I think bringing it to the court of public opinion before trying to do anything systematically is a little iffy. Yeah, because I think it's like you're exactly like you said, like everyone's going to deal with things differently. And I think like you not, you know, publicly posting about your experience and quote unquote warning other women like that doesn't mean like you're not feminist and like you didn't like do your job. Yeah, because you do see a lot of people publicly out like like speaking about it but there's but that's like that's hard to do that's not easy but I do there's a think lot like it, it is a little iffy because like in mine it was an intimate relationship say you're a girl who was you know essayed at like a party or something and then you see this person consistently at a party with other girls that you know and you want to make them aware and make sure they're safe like I think if I saw more like my abuser or whatever does not live in the state anymore yeah, like, like he he's just, not he was around gone. so like <laughs> or my so head. it's like <laughs> so it's it's easier for me to like separate myself from it but like, that's so yeah true. I just I just want to like with the Atlanta list again I don't know the person that created it like I don't know enough about it I'm not from Atlanta I've only been in the scene for like about a year so like a lot of it is hearsay and like whatever from me for me but at the same time, I'm always going to believe, like, women's experiences. And I do want, like, justice for them. I just think that we have to, like, walk a fine line and be careful. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so next I want to get into a little bit about gossip and yeah. if it's feminist. I love this. Because, this like we said, like, is it just gossip and drama? And even the Wikipedia article said it consists of gossip about people in a community. So I found this article. Um, well, it's actually, like, a academic essay it's by maria verena peters and it's called from the whisper network to hashtag me too framing gender gossip and sexual harassment and we are going to return to this article again at the end but this part just says the label gossip when applied to a woman or wom women's talk is understood as a discursive weapon of the patriarchy to disparage bonds women may form to sum it up Gossip works against women in two ways. Quote, gossip as a label for women's talk functions as a strategy to silence women. It denounces or prevents communication amongst women in public discourse. Assigning this label to their statements is a weapon used against women to discredit them both in the media and in the courtroom. Before hashtag me too, women who spoke up against harassment were thus simultaneously denounced as gossip and paradoxically also made into objects of gossip. Damn, bro, that's crazy. I feel like the part that like hit home for me was like, it's like a weapon used against women to discredit them both in the media and the courtroom. It's like you think about where gossip come from. Like I very much do think of the media like growing up, like seeing like yeah. TV characters tabloids. gossip and like mean girls and tabloids and all that shit. And it's like, but I also feel like gossiping is like, bonding for women a lot of the time yes and I don't know why that is but like I mean guys like I I love to gossip like genuinely I love yeah to. people same. can gossip and it's about a survival me. Me mechanism like yeah but I it's like why that. I didn't bring any of that research in here because like I wanted to try to keep it as focused as I could but like gossip is a survival mechanism like going back in history to like keep people safe from like you Crazy. know lions or like whatever the fuck so like it, it makes sense, and I think it is a tool when the systems are not in your favor, you know? Yeah. Like, you have to, like, inform other women and keep other women safe. So, like, I think it's, like, important when we say, like, oh, that's just gossip or, oh, that's just, like, hearsay, like, whatever, to be, like, careful. Careful. Because, you know, and, and that's the sad part. Like, a lot of women have brought this up in court tried to bring it to court, tried to bring it to law enforcement, their school, their work, whatever. And it was and it labeled as heard. gossip. And yeah, I don't it, believe you. 
Exactly. And like, again, like trauma, people don't always just go get a rape kit immediately after. Like there's a whole process you have to go through. Like, and it's like the he said, she said is like a different way of saying gossip also. Yeah. And then that's what they love to use against women in court and everything like that. And then also defamation, which we're going to get into a little bit later. Like men love to claim defamation um, in defense of these kind of accusations, whatever. So all of that to say, now we're going to get into these Facebook groups that are trending online. And I want to first read from this article that says the community, which began with the very specific intention of helping women verify whether their romantic prospects were seeing other people was started in March, 2022. Nearly every major U.S. city has a similar group now, and the rules for all are clear. Anyone has the right to post anonymously. No doxing or posting sensitive information, and under no circumstances can screenshots leave the group. No bullying, no victim blaming, no hate speech. Never tell a man he's been posted in the group. (laughs) Um, And just before we talk about it, real quick, this kind of comes, I think, out of some fear that like manifested on TikTok as well with all these TikToks where women were trying to figure out like if a man's cheating because, yeah. you know, they were hearing so many stories about men aren't loyal, da 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 da. So we're going to watch these two TikToks real quick and then we're going to talk about it. Right. But wait, let me just say, yeah. though, because... I'm like, the the rules that they have on these groups are no screenshotting and no telling a man he's in the group. How the fuck do you think you can maintain that? You can't. That is a crazy rule to even write and think that that shit's not going to happen. Like, that's delusional. And it's also shocking that it started in March 2022. Like, I don't know if it's the Matrix, but I feel like it's been, like, going on forever. And I don't know. I have a lot of opinions about it, honestly. But, yeah, let's watch the TikToks. I cannot believe the sequence of events I just witnessed on this flight that I was just on. If your husband's name is Brian with a Y and he was traveling today from Orlando MCO to Chicago O'Hare on Thursday, March 14th, the flight was around 2.15 PM. He sat next to me and the second that he sat down in the seat, he downloaded the Hinge app and created a Hinge profile. And the best part? was he was selecting photos from a photo album on his phone titled Dating Apps. He was in a burgundy t-shirt, like a dark red t-shirt, light gray sweatpants, and white on cloud running sneakers that were really dirty. And his backpack was black and it was the Razor brand. He's like a little scruffy, had some like grays in his beard over here. Very like large and in charge gentleman, very attractive. He wears a black watch on his right wrist and a silver wedding band on his left ring finger. And I'll put a picture of it right here. And he FaceTimed his wife, who I would guess is his wife, and his child when they landed and said that he would call them when he got to the hotel. If this is your husband, DM me on Instagram because I have pictures, I have proof. And this was just a very odd thing to see. And stay safe out there, girls. Is he clean or does he have a girl? Is he clean or does he have a girlfriend? I think he has a, what the, you're kidding. You're actually kidding. Like, that's a girlfriend. This is not real. Someone needs to get that first bitch on like the FBI team because that was a little bit much for me. Um. I feel like you and I definitely do have some differing of like opinions on this. Like, yeah, I get that. Like, that's really unfortunate that like that husband is doing that. But why the fuck is that your job to fix? Like, that's just crazy to me. Like, you're going to like literally break apart this family. Like, I don't know. Like, see, it, it comes off the heels of like true crime being such a popular category, I think, for, like, women. And then there was, um, was it Gabby, whatever, that had disappeared? And, like, oh. so many people tried to find her on TikTok. Like, I think that's Because it was it. a white girl also, because how many black women have disappeared? Exactly. Say? Exactly. Yeah. So, like, I think people love to, like, and then I also watched that next Netflix film about, like, the cat 
abuser or something and like they that. love to follow oh the cat abuser yeah please don't oh my it god it was like so like there has come some good out of internet sleuthing but things like this like if you guys listen to our girl code episode like we are very yeah. much of the mindset where it's like it like let her find out maybe she fucking knows the woman but if like, that's, that's your not best your friend it's different it's different but, but that's like, a whole stranger, bro. Like, I just personally think that that's too fucking much. I do. And I don't think I'm a bad woman because of it. So, yeah. 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 And it's crazy how popular it is because, like, I've ended up, like, these just popped up in my timeline, both of them, without really looking for them because I'm in a lot of sex and relationships topics on TikTok yeah. for the podcast. So it's kind of, like, crazy to me. And I feel like it also creates this, like, mass fear about yeah. like, oh, yeah. your man could be cheating. Like, it's not only the searching and the doxing, which we're going to get into a little bit later, how dangerous that can be. Right. Because you're putting a stranger's business out there. Yeah. And, like, and the child, like, she was like, he FaceTimed you and your kid. It's like, don't talk about the kid. Like, and I also just think, like, like, it's just, you don't know people's intentions online. Because at the end of the day, that video blew up. She knew exactly what the fuck she was doing. Like, does she really care about that family? Or did she want to just hop on this true crime thing? We don't know. Yeah. I do think that the cleaning video, like, definitely pisses me off less. Like, I feel that. Like, especially, like, with my last partner. Like, it's kind I, of I, funny. Like, everyone yeah. in the comments was like, oh, he has a rich girlfriend because those products are, like, good or, like, whatever. Right. And it, But it's still, like, it brings me to think because, like, I've had some talks with, like, guy friends recently and also, like, girls as well that I think, like, I have very different opinions on. I mean, different opinions then. Yeah. Um, and I've been in this mentality before. I had an ex that cheated on me, and I remember, like, psychotically watching his stories, looking for people in the background. Like, I know. Like, doing would- all of that toxic shit. But I'm very much of the mentality of, like, what you don't know doesn't hurt you and the universe will bring it into my mind if it's meant to be. I do not want to drive myself crazy and ruin my own day over, like... no. No, like, my full-time job is not to, like, be a detective, you know? Yeah. Like, maybe put those gifts somewhere else. (laughs) I know. Like, I I just think it's too fucking much and I don't think it's as feminist as y'all fucking think it is. Like... I really don't. I think it's way too much. Like, please leave that woman alone. Maybe she already knows. How fucking stupid would you? Maybe she already knows. And then you're just like out here. Let me save her. Like, sit the fuck down, bitch. And you're inviting everyone to come comment on it. Comment and know. It's like posting his hand. I mean, I'm sure he's a piece of shit. Like, I'm sure he is. But like. It's too much. Like, y'all need to delete TikTok off your phone, some of you. Like, and, and, actually. T- and touch some grass. I'm, like, on Please. one today. Like, this shit pisses me off, Fiji. Yeah, it's a lot. Trust me. I knew this was going to be a good one. So kind of going off of this and bringing it back to the Facebook groups, the difference between the Facebook groups, I think, is kind of more like that second TikTok where it's, like, women asking Yes. Have you seen this man? Anything like that. So we did ask you guys, like, for feedback about this group these groups and we had one listener story submit i'm in a whole group called is this your man atl edition on facebook and you best believe i'm posting that man on there before i even meet up with him because ain't no way i'm gonna be caught lacking and it's so funny because i had joined this group for like research most of the men in the group did you know any of them no, they're like 45 plus like oh shit i like maybe i'll include some screenshots with like well no i'm not gonna no bitch it. no we're gonna get in <laughs> trouble no <laughs> but a hoots video like which i'm gonna talk about after she did put screenshots but she like blurred names and she like covered faces for pictures exactly what y'all rules talking about now right but like i think there is like this fear that comes out of this like oh it's so embarrassing like if your man does cheat on you you don't want to be caught lacking like whatever so people go to these groups to like protect themselves and like make sure that this isn't happening so like i said i watched hoots but it's also like sorry but it's like it's embarrassing for the guy like i get that it's embarrassing like you feel like that as a woman that it's like Damn, like that's embarrassing, but like we need to stop because no, right, that's we didn't shame. do anything wrong, babe. Like, like I get this, I get it. It's like they don't want to get hurt. I get it, but it's just like 
that it looks more on them like who cares and it's also like tr- i believe in like and this is help from therapy like trust in your power to like be able to get over things when they like happen like going through someone cheating on you can be traumatic for like and a trust lot of people. in your intuition like you don't need facebook like just go meet up with this person like like honestly because like my ex like you know didn't really cheat on me but like broke our boundaries in our open relationship like it's helped me be like with his new bitch there's no way he's not cheating on her yeah zero negative five percent he doesn't yeah. still have bitches in his phone and that makes me feel better sue me but it fucking does bitch so yeah because like yeah. once a cheater always a cheater and like i think that's a big like trend on this too like women will post someone and someone might be like oh they cheated on me but my mentality is still a little bit like that doesn't necessarily going to mean that they're going to cheat on the next person. Like they do have the ability to heal. And like, I don't look at cheating as like as abusive as like domestic violence, sexual assault, like all of those. Right. Things. Yeah. So, yeah. It sucks. But it's also, this is the human experience. Like talk like non-monogamy. Like that's a whole thing that we're like dealing with right now. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. that bitch. Like you can handle being cheated on. Like bitch, way shit worse is happening to people. Right, exactly. But there is some other stuff in the Facebook group. So I watched Hoot's video on YouTube. Shout out to her. She has a lot of really good video essays as well. Definitely check her out. But the video is all about, you know, the are we dating the same guy Facebook group. And she pretty much breaks up these groups into six different categories of posting. So the six different categories that she says are outing cheaters, seeking dating advice. So being like, oh, like I'm in this situation. What do you guys think I should do? Um, warning about catfishing and scams, venting and jokes about dating, like memes and stuff like that, tea or red flag, like someone might like post someone and, and put like the tea emoji or the like red flag and with question marks and be like any tea, any red flags, just like wondering information about them. And then the last one, which is kind of going back to those whisper networks, um, is warning about SA, abuse, violence, or was this SA? domestic abuse, violence, which I think is really sad and interesting. Like some women have these experiences where they're not quite sure. So they seek these groups as like a therapeutic way to work that's through their so trauma. That's so fucking real. Yeah. And like, that's why I do believe in these groups to an extent, because I do think like group therapy and like lear- learning from other people's experiences can be healing. Like our last episode about, you know, like strippers and celibacy, I think it was really helpful to hear other women's responses. But there's a range. There is such a fucking yeah. wide range. I feel like that last category was like the warning about essay abuse and like, is this like, I feel like we need a safe space for that. Like we do need like some sort of, but it's just like hard when it comes to credibility. Like there are some women out there that would, would, Okay, maybe I shouldn't say that. No. Go, say, but not they would lie about something that happened to them, but they would be so mad, like, at a man and, like, don't want any yes. other bitches to date them yes. that I could see them, like, kind of embellishing in that group. Oh, and well, so there's you just There's definitely can't believe. things like that. Like, I saw on some of the posts and, like, the screenshots that Hoots shared as well, like, there will be someone asking for tea or something and someone will share, like, a certain experience that you're kind of, like, is it that bad? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, say I dated this guy, super terrible for me, but like, maybe we were just incompatible or something like that. But she, like, I have a lot of hate towards him because like, it came at a bad time, like whatever, like things like that, where it's a little bit iffy. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And this is why it just goes back to like, one of the things that Hoots shared a lot like consistently like at the end she shared a story that she had about abuse and how she had a system fail for her in her working environment and it caused her to leave her job and that's why like these groups are so like important in a sense because the system is failing us but again like there's it, it, it becomes messy when we're yeah. blurring these lines. And I think when anything's online, it's going to be messy because you mm-hmm. just don't fucking know. But I do think that, like, is it all bad? No, absolutely not. Like, I think that there are real genuine people posting in those groups, like, yes. warning other people, like, wanting people to be safe. Maybe it's the majority of that. 
But yeah. I'm just like, you can just never, like the online world is just, you can never really know who's behind that keyboard. You don't know. And, and I think like the the one time I would see it be like more like useful, like we're going to get into it a li- like a little bit later, but you know the who the fuck did I marry story, which I didn't watch the entire TikTok, but like there were like all these red flags, like whatever. Like if you're dating someone long term where you have these suspicions, like you've seen things like whatever and you're like married or something and you like really want to know like you're in a long term relationship. I can see this being a thing because you're like at that point where you're ready to know. But the difference, I think, is a lot of these women are just going on there for like first time meeting this guy or like a guy they might go on a date with. And it's almost like you're having this like warped perception of this guy too early before meeting him that's yeah. a little too much you know I know it's like what it I know because I really do think that like like abusers are abusers point like blank fucking period like honestly they don't deserve second chances yeah. but a guy that just like like they weren't incompatible and like he was maybe kind of annoying like he doesn't deserve to be like wrecked in that Facebook group yeah. And but I also just want to be so careful. Like, I don't want you guys to think that it's like I'm not believing women. Right. And that's because, why it's so hard to talk about because yeah. it is scary because, again, like the system, like it's so hard because like I'm both of us are so much for women. And so and I believe for men women. when they talk about abuse as well. Like I believe right. all survivors that talk about that. But I'm just saying that, like, I can see how this shit would, like, kind of go to an unhealthy level, even though, like, maybe it was created in pure intentions and all of that. Because when you make it so widespread and everyone has access to it, like, it's never going to be perfect. Like, it's never going to be. Yeah, yeah. So I want to get into next, like, this seventh category, which I found, um, which is loyalty testing. And I think this started on TikTok. So that article Glamour that we mentioned before in the beginning yeah. um, says loyalty testing long-term boyfriends. That is the practice of sending other women to tempt them on social media. And this has also become super common. So I've seen a lot of these TikToks as well. It's not just women. I've come across, like there was one I saw from a guy that had like 5 million views. So the guys are doing this too. Not Why would women. anyone put themselves through that? I just break up with them if you're so fucking worried. I did this in like middle school, but I'm like, if you're grown, like let's like come take on, a deep, dude. Take a deep fucking. There's breath. people on TikTok where that's their whole brand. That's all that they do. It's not like they just do it once. It's yeah, everything. and they make money off of it, and that's who we're gonna talk about. So Trinity, Kai, K. I don't know how to say it, but she has 530 plus K followers on TikTok. And I can't remember if her specifically like asked for money, but like the guy definitely did. He was like, you know, send me $20, whatever, and I'll do this for you. Um, So, you know, get your bag, sis, but like also a little scary. So let's watch this TikTok. So this girl messaged me on Lazo and asked me to DM her boyfriend. So I said, I feel like I saw you in a show before. And he said, hmm, highly unlikely, LOL, do we know each other? I said, I think it was at the place where your show was at. And he said, that's possible, where at? And then the girlfriend messaged me and said, it's okay, he told me about it, so he passed. So we were both happy, we thought he passed, and I forgot to block him. And then he messaged me the next day and said, so what made you hit me up? I sent it to the girlfriend, and she was like, yeah, keep it going. So I said, honestly, I just thought you were super cute. He said, oh, dang, too bad you don't stay in Atlanta. I said, I don't, but I'm always there visiting family. He said, when do you visit next? I said, I'm actually driving right now so I can be there for Thanksgiving. He said, well, if you get bored and want a link, I'm always down, lol. I said, I'd love to. What'd you have in mind? He said, maybe a dinner or a drink. We can always do an activity. Just let me know when, and I can see what's open. And I said, I'd love that. So I sent that to his girlfriend and then she left him and then I blocked him. Like, I can see how bitches think that they're doing like God's work through this. Like, yep, I blocked him. I sent it to his girlfriend, ended that relationship. Like, I'm like, and like, guys are way too fuck like they're so fucking easy it's disgusting and I don't want to ignore that. I'm like, I don't know if she does this off a different account, but I'm like, 
he could look at her TikTok and know what she's doing. Like all it takes is a little bit of research. Like these guys are dumb and it is kind of sad to watch it happen because it makes you think, oh my God, would my man do this? Oh my God, whatever. Yeah. And the way she says it with no remorse and I sent it to the girlfriend and then they broke up and yeah. And then I got paid $3,000 from this video. (laughs) Like, that psychopath, no shade to her, but damn, like, I guess maybe this is, like, the millionth video she does, so she don't feel bad anymore about, like, any type of, but, like, wow. I'm just, like, I would never, like, I will literally, like, not look at people's stories to protect myself. I would never have a fucking bitch reach out to my man to see what happens. Oh, it's just a fun little game. Break up with him if you feel like he's going to fucking. Right. Like, I, like pay attention to your own mental health in this stuff, too, because it's like why? Like you are setting him up like this is a version of like literally setting him up like it's entrapment kind of like not to get deep. But it's like and I this girl goes to fucking bed at night, like so happy that she's broken like hundreds and hundreds of relationships up. And it's like, oh, well, I did it because I caught them and like. Yeah, I'm kind of nervous, but I feel you on the entrapment. However, I want to be very careful because, like, guys always get the pass. Oh, well, like, if a woman a woman comes up to them, it's like, well, he's a guy. Like, of course he's going to want to flirt. Yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. No, that's not what I mean. But this is entrapment. Like, this is, like, have a conversation with your fucking boyfriend. Like, Please. Like, clearly there's, like, signs that, like, you haven't developed trust or, like, maybe you're not even, like, completely, like, solid yet. Like, maybe you're in a situation, like, they said boyfriend in this one. But it's, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like we're, like, skipping out on the work that it takes to build a relationship and skipping right to this. And right. also, I'm kind of of the mindset that I don't think cheating always has to break relationships. Like, the relationship could be rocky. Things could happen. Not just, like, I don't want to manifest any cheating. But we're also kind of, like, slightly non-monogamy hoes. Yes. Yes, Girly. exactly. Like, I, I want to, like, leave space to also not shame women who stay with someone who cheated on them and things oh, like that. Oh, fuck like, no. Because no, 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 the no, whole no, no. girl leave him language and all of that is so prevalent in these groups. And it's kind of that girl code of, like, like, respect yourself like do better da 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 and it's a fine yeah and it's like feeling bad for a woman because she stayed and like he cheated on her like we need to stop doing that like you don't know her life like why are we feeling bad for her like maybe everything's great maybe she could have gone to therapy maybe she had done things in the past like we don't know exactly like y'all think you know and honestly I think I'm a little bit angry because of the mommy blogger TikTok, like, I'm kind of anti-TikTok right now because I'm honestly, like, second-guessing every creator I've ever fucking seen because it's just, like, at the end of the day, they're doing this for a job. Like, and it's, like, Drew Afualo, like, she started doing it when it wasn't a job. Like, she made all those videos, so, like, she is excluded from this. I mean, us too, even. Like, we don't get, right now, transparency, we don't get any money. We have had a brand deal. Yeah, we're pass. losing money, guys. We're lo- we're literally losing money. But that's money. how much we love to talk <laughs> but about we like, this shit. Yeah, we, and, and I don't know, like, maybe this girl, this is really what she's passionate about. This is what the change she wishes to see in the fucking world. I feel like people are being, like, seduced by capitalism to be like, oh, like, this is how relationships should be, like, da-da-da-da. And it's like... No, like, again, back to connection, building relationships, relationships take work, like, all of those things, like, a quick fix and a quick got em. internet sleuthing, true crime, like, we right. need to stop taking so much content. Yeah. I know. I know. It's And it's, like, honestly, it's, like, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. Like, when I first saw one of those loyalty test videos, like, I was entertained. I wanted yes. to see how it ended. You want to know the tea. So you I get the why these bitches have views. Like, I'm not hating on people that consume that content. But it's just, like, it's kind of, like, we need to just, like, take a step back and, like, look at what we're actually fucking doing right now. Yeah. Because yeah. this is, like, actually crazy. Do you want to move on to the next poll we asked yeah. them? So this next poll we asked you guys was, how do you feel about the Facebook groups? Like, are we dating the same man in similar group chats? And the results were 47% said, I wouldn't join, but I get it. 37% said, we need them to catch the cheaters. And 16% said, I think they're dumb. 
I also think they're dumb. I, I don't think, think we dumb. needed to catch the cheaters. I don't think we needed to catch the cheaters. I wouldn't join one, but I get it. Maybe, depending yeah. on the Facebook group when it comes to like any SA stuff or like women asking, was this SA? I honestly think that's vital. And I think even though the internet's hard to like do anything, I think that that is like, it's still I important. I think Reddit or other groups are better for that though. Like I yeah. don't think joining one of those is the right place for it. Yeah. Honestly, but like. Yeah, like, catch the cheaters. Like, it's, like, the the witch hunt stuff, which is so, like, I'm, like, even using those terms is so fucking iffy because of the history of Me Too and, like, women, like, you know, trying to get justice for SA and all of those things. But <laughs> I, I know. know. I'm still against it. I think it's, like, I don't yes, think it's worth they it. speak your mind. <laughs> I'm against it, too, honestly. I've never been a part of one. Like, I... Did request one like for this episode. Yeah, I, I joined one I for successful. this episode. But I've had like friends in LA that were like serious about it and like would see someone on Hinge and then like not talk to them. So like it's definitely like the LA one is hopping the fuck as well. Sure. For yeah. Sure. And I've asked like I feel like what I've done more like close to this is like if I see we have mutuals or something, I met this guy out, I met him on Hinge, like whatever. And I see we have mutuals. That's one of my close friends. I'll ask right. if they know anything about them. But, like, yeah. I still haven't always used that to, like, inform my decisions. But that's decisions. so like, different. Like, it's not strangers. It's, it's not accessible yeah. to anyone that lives in fucking Atlanta. Like, that's crazy. And you can post anonymously, but still. it's Okay, it's yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So, next I want to get into, like, is this stuff defamation? Like, if you share a picture of a guy, if you share, like, your history with him, all of those things, is it defamation? So there was this court case that is currently going on right now, and I'll give you guys some tea about it. This is from the Los Angeles Times. The article's titled, he claimed 10 women defamed him in Are We Dating the Same Guy group. So this is in L.A., and it says, and then there is the case of Stuart Lucas Murray, who sued a group of women after they talked about him in a private Facebook group, warning others about his bad behavior on dating apps. The lawsuit names as defendants 10 women, but a Los Angeles Superior Court judge recently tossed out the suit against one. Murray vows to pursue the legal squabble. He's a Santa Monica resident, and he said his social status took a hit because of the comments made by women who he claims he have met through dating apps. His June 2023 lawsuit filed in the Los Angeles Superior Court accused the women of defamation and seeks $2 million in damages. He claims sex-based discrimination because he couldn't join the Facebook group. Again, remember, men are allowed to join to respond to the claims made against him and alleges a civil conspiracy. Murray said he was labeled a murderer and the women accused him of having sexually transmitted infections, according to his complaint. On Monday, um, this was a little bit ago, a couple weeks ago, Judge Gregory Keosin dismissed his lawsuit against one woman after she filed an anti slap motion, which targets lawsuits that seek to censor, intimidate, and silence critics. So I also want to talk a little bit about this um, video that I watched of like kind of a press conference outside the courtroom where it had some of these women that he accused and they were seeking legal representation. So this was on Fox 11 Los Angeles. I'll link the YouTube video. So they didn't have legal representation at the time. Again, like this is going to come out probably when the case has progressed. And I want to say all of these are allegations just so we don't get into any legal trouble. Yeah. But they were allegations, in my opinion, these are all allegations. Exactly. So they were without legal representation at the time, um, but they were calling for it in the media. So that's why they wanted the media there. They wanted someone to represent them, probably pro bono. Um, and many of these women did not even meet this man. Uh, women shared experiences, they said, to keep each other safe. And they are arguing for free speech with this group chat. And one of the woman, women who did meet him shared her story, and she said that it was just a bad date in general. Like, they were asked to wear masks when they showed up to this, like, restaurant or wherever they were, and he kind of complained about it. He had an issue about wearing the mask on the date, and then he started ranting on about conspiracy theories, about COVID-19 and the pandemic. Um, he also was kind of, like, looking down on her work, her job, 
And he was just like arrogant and smug were some words that she used to describe him. And then in another article, one woman shared a story about an exchange she allegedly had with Murray after the two matched on a Tinder app. He insisted on meeting her that evening, but she was busy. According to a screenshot of her comment, Murray allegedly found her Instagram page, tracked her down at a Beverly Hills hotel bar where she was having a business meeting. Um, and then they also want to hold dating apps accountable for removing profiles. And they also said that he was defaming them by calling them losers, criminals, short, and chubby. Um, and then, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit before we get into anything more. <laughs> I'm just, like, shook because I did not know about this, like, at all. I'm kind of scared to, like, say anything because holy shit. It's a lot. So he was, he was a, he, like the whole thing started, he was labeled a murderer and the women accused him of having a sexually transmitted infection. But did That's anyone sleep claiming. with him? I, not in the, like the press conference thing outside the court that I saw and not in this little snippet from the article. It was just that he kind of like showed up at the hotel bar and like based on all the media from like this case, he does kind of have a history of like showing up places. So apparently one of the women that he had sued, he sued 50 women total. Um, even though she didn't like respond to like his sue claims, he showed up at her address. So he went to the home of Kelly Gibbons at 10.45 p.m. and returned days later at 8.45 PM. She had never met him in person and had only briefly swapped messages with him on a dating app. She says she never gave him her address and doesn't know how he found it. So he was pretty much claiming he went there to like notify her about these legal claims, like whatever. But I will say that is pretty fucking creepy to me and like weird, like definitely crossing a line. Like I don't know. It's kind of iffy because when I first watched the press conference and the woman was talking about the bad date where he didn't wear the mask and the conspiracy theories, I was kind of thinking like, okay, we've all run into this before on a dating app. I've been on dates with guys that I met online and got there and I've been like, oh, we definitely don't see eye to eye. Like they are maybe a Trump supporter or they're like veering towards QAnon or like whatever, like not in my views wouldn't necessarily say they're an abuser or anything like that, would not see them again. Okay, so like at first when I saw that clip, I'm like, is does she have real claims? Like whatever. Was it just um, a bad date? Was it just a bad date? And like because a lot of the women hadn't met him as well, I was kind of like, mm. But I do think this like intimidation factor of like him showing up at this girl's like business meeting at this bar and then showing up at this other woman's home after yeah. he tried to sue her is a little much. So maybe these women like had an intuition about him like that is kind of proving correctly, you know? Right. Because it just seems like we need to think about like who this guy is like because it's like if someone else showed up, it's like you just have to think about who the person is. That's what makes it fucked up. So if he has this like history of just like showing up places and obviously like Google this girl's address, like if he's the type to do something like that, then I'm like, OK, well, then he he is a bad guy. Yeah. You know, it's, that's it's kind like of how I feel. But I'm just. And like 50 women. So all these women were like he had dated a little bit, messaged a little bit with back and forth. And they were yeah. all like kind of coming after him. Yeah. So in the group, because it's like everyone in L.A., like I don't know how the thread started. I don't have screenshots of the. But it's like a huge itself. thing on this but one. Yeah. Guy. So like someone had posted them like bad exchange, whatever. And then like, I guess all of these 50 women were like women that had like commented or something. And like somehow he got a hold of it. You know, and he's claiming like this is defamation and because he's a man and he wasn't allowed in the group that like he didn't couldn't defend himself. All of these things. So and but then, it's like oh, who think about the type of guy that would go to all these links like it's like maybe a good person would just be like, OK, like 50 women had a bad experience with me. Maybe I need to like do some reflection move yeah. forward and never bother those women again. 
to like sue them. Like that just like tells me a lot about his character right there as well and the decisions that he's making. So that's like like this suing is crazy. them is kind of crazy because he said yeah. his social status took a hit. And I mean, I will say like we'll get into doxing and all of that like a little bit later, but like. It is terrifying to find out that you're being talked about online and information is being shared about you in your private dating life. Like, I can't imagine, like, imagine if one of us, like, found out, like, oh, there's this group chat that's talking about this, this, this thing that we did. Like, that is scary. So, like, I would argue in some senses it could be, like, a trauma response or, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that is a lot. But I do think that, like, I was very against it when I first saw it. I was like, these women are doing too much. Like, these groups are, like, way extra. But for him to show up at their houses and, like, some of these stories, I think goes to show, you know, like, women have a keen intuition for men that are weird because of everything that we're put through in regular fucking day society. And it's sometimes hard to, like explain that or bring it up in like a court or anything like that because it is gossip and it's hearsay and it's whatever but you almost have this feeling because we're so exposed to like sexual trauma and all of that stuff yeah it's like you know it's like intuition doesn't matter in a court you know what I mean right so yeah I think it's so I think it's really tricky but like I'm honestly, and I bet everyone's, like, dying to, like, see kind of what happens. Like, I bet this is being covered on TikTok and, like, all of that. And, like, it does kind of create fear as well that, like, you know, because, like, this is scary. This is scary. Well, and that's the scary thing because if this, like, defamation proves true or whatever, like, you know, even Johnny Depp and Amber Heard with her, like, essay or whatever about Johnny Depp's abuse, like, it can prevent women from having these whisper networks, which is again, even further difficult for women to, like, report sexual assault, abuse, all And not things. why this group was created. Right. Because I do just kind of feel like, you know, this very much sounds like, like, a man thing to do. And, like, even calling them, like, chubby and stuff. Like, that, it definitely yeah, doesn't seem like. Yeah, that stuff, like, too. We didn't talk about that, but yeah. He's not a good guy. Like, he's calling them losers, criminals. Like, he's, even if, like. he's defaming them. Because even if they were being extra and in the wrong, like, a good, like, healthy man, like, still wouldn't handle it by, like, calling them fat. Like, Right. He would, like, like, don't stoop to their level type of thing. Like, whatever. Like, it seems like it's giving misogyny. It's it's bad on both sides, I think. But, like, I I don't know. This guy just seems like such an asshole that I still kind of want to be on the women's side. Whatever. But. But that's why we're all about duality. It's never going to be black and white like that. Exactly. And at the end of the day, we don't know everything. We're not looking these women in the eyes. So it's like we're getting what, you know, the media and the news is also telling us. You have to understand that as well. Like that is kind of like masking it in a way in itself because they don't yeah. tell us everything. Right. Um, and we'll have to see how it plays out in court. Like we. I, yeah. I but what do you guys think? It. Like, please let us know. Comment below what you think about this. I'm like. Again, my first time hearing at the same time. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's insane. Okay, so going off of that, that is not the only case that comes with these Facebook groups. There's another one, and this is reported on NPR um, March 11th, I believe, of 2024. So this is even more recent. The last one, I think, was 2023. Um, But... Pretty much, this is an interview between a constitutional law professor at the University of Florida where they talk about Nico D'Ambrosio. Um, he is suing several online platforms and dozens of women, so he's suing the platforms as well, claiming that he was defamed and doxxed and that his privacy was invaded. And this happened in the Are We Dating the Same Guy Chicago group. <laughs> so we're just going to go back and forth, guys. Um, professor, does the right to free speech protect what is written in these kinds of Facebook groups? Well, to use the classic lawyer answer, it depends. It really depends on whether people are making false factual assertions that damage reputation or whether they're just expressing their subjective opinions in a way that's not asserting false facts. Okay, so D'Ambrosio claims that he was called clingy. How does the law determine clingy? Then, how does things get proven when you are clingy? Well, clingy is clearly an opinion that's not verifiable, not provable in a court of law. 
He also made some other statements that might come closer to asserting false facts, but a lot of what he seems to be complaining about would fall into the category of protected opinion. It really, one of the hallmarks of opinion is whether you're implying a fact about the person that would tend to damage their reputation. Certainly opinions can damage reputation too, but in order to protect free speech, we let people have their opinions, even if they're misguided. Right. And people post opinions on products and services all the time. Is that something similar? Could that be argued here? Yes, it absolutely is. This site is something akin to Yelp for dating. And there have been lawsuits involving all of the different review sites. TripAdvisor, Yelp, they've all been subject to defamation lawsuits based on unpleasant and unfavorable reviews. Of course they have. (laughs) So have we seen a case like this before? Well, as a matter of fact, we have. There was an older app called Don't Hate... (laughs) There was an older app called DontDateHimGirl.com. And in 2006, there was a very similar lawsuit by a man who had been criticized very harshly by an ex-dating partner on that site. Do you know what happened in that case? Well, all I can find out from that case is that it was ultimately settled, so we don't really... dot, dot, dot. Yeah, we don't really know. So, like, it, then it goes into a further NPR interview, like, whatever. But I just thought that this was really interesting because I don't have as many facts about what exactly the claims were, but I thought Clingy was kind of hilarious because you guys know we just did an episode on Clingy. Anyone who watches Love is Blind knows that Chelsea was appalled at Clingy. being called Clingy. Um, but, but also, yeah. don't date him, girl.com. That's crazy. That is hilarious. That's very 2006, I guess. Right. I'm here for it. It, It's kind of kind. But yeah, I don't have much to say about this because we're going to talk about like, should these dating platforms like review sites kind of like TripAdvisor, Yelp exist? So we're going to move into the infamous West Elm Caleb. Do you know about West Elm Caleb? You do. Okay. It's a little wishy-washy. Apparently there's two Caleb's. I don't fucking know. But this all can be traced back to meme shoe on TikTok. This TikTok was posted in January of 2022 and it had 1.5 million views. So we are going to watch this right now. I'm going to make a video about this, but I feel like it's my duty as your Asian older sister to warn my New York City girls about this Caleb from West Elm ASAP. So in my recent video, I made a joke to call out this very tall Caleb I went on a date with in New York City, and it kind of went viral, but I kept having girls comment being like, is this the West Elm Caleb? And I'm like, who is this West Elm Caleb? And why do you guys keep asking that? Like, how do you guys all know this guy? I was so confused. But then I get a DM from a Caleb who says he's also very tall, and I click on his bio and it says West Elm Furniture Designer. And I was like, oh my God, is this him? I ignore him as queens do. Then I get a girl DM me being like, oh my God, are you talking about the West Elm Caleb? And I'm like, who the hell is he? And can you please explain why there's so many girls commenting about him? So we first confirm that it is the same Caleb that DM me. And I'm like, oh my God, why is he everywhere? And she tells me that they've matched on Hinge before and that they were texting intensely for a while. And he is like love bombing her, even though they've never met up before, like have not gone on a first date. And I'm like, that is the biggest red flag out of all the red flags. Then, of course, he ghosts her. But the funniest part is this girl sends me a TikTok that another girl made gushing about her hinge date. And she tells me, she's like, I confirmed using my detective work that this is about West Elm Caleb. And the girl in the video is like head over heels, gushing about this guy. And it's like so giddy. And I'm like, oh my God, I recognize this girl. That used to be me when I was stupid and naive. And I'm DMing this girl back being like, oh my God, do we tell her? Maybe I am jumping to conclusions because I've only heard one story, but I just feel like love bombing is the gateway red flag to all of the other red flags. And if that many girls are commenting about you on a TikTok, that just like doesn't look good. And this is why we need that app I just talked about where we can leave reviews of guys we've dated on Hinge because then I don't have to make this subtle video trying to warn this girl. I'm just going to leave it up to the TikTok gods now. And if this video shows up on your For You page and you happen to be dating a West Elm Caleb, consider yourself warned and maybe keep your card up. As if dating isn't fucking hard enough, dude. Now it's like, this is, I'm like having a fucking out of body experience right now. This is like actually insane, PG. Yeah. What the fuck? 
Yeah. I'm like, so they want to make a fucking Yelp for Hinge dates reviews as if it's not hard enough. Like, let people grow. Let them change. Like, I, I don't give a fuck about West Elm Caleb, but like, that's going to affect like, I, I'm done. I'm actually, I'm dropping out of all. So so that's one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is like, do we need a reviews for people that we've dated on Hinge? No. Because I'm like. No. I don't think so either. It's, it's, it's making our personal intimate relationships viewed in a capitalistic lens. Like that those ass. are for businesses and places that you spend money. Like a clothing not complicated review. Relationships. Like, I think it's like everyone, like we're feeling the power. We're feeling the power of technology. And everyone's trying to fucking build it up to like, quote unquote, make our lives better. I guarantee fucking motherfucking to you <laughs> that if there is a hinge review site, like, no, every man will be on there because, like, majority, of, like, I don't but know. But I'm, like, Gigi. also, like, I'm, I'm not going to have great reviews. Like, and that's what I right. want to talk about. Like, love, she said, he is, accu- she's accusing him of love bombing, which is, quote, the biggest red flag of all red flags. And then he eventually ghosted. I have ghosted Probably every single But also love person. bombing's the biggest, the biggest red flag? Are you for real? It's the gate she said she's saying it's the gateway to all other red flags and it's the biggest of all red flags. Yeah, I, that was one of my discussion questions I wanted to ask you because I was like, do you th- do you believe that? Fuck no. <laughs> the biggest red flag is like who they voted for in 2020, like on fucking god. And that still hasn't stopped me. Or from- like their fucking prison record. Like they're like, I don't know. Like there's. So or many- misogyny, racism, like yeah. love bombing sucks. And like, maybe she's right. Like maybe it is like a gateway. Like I, I don't really think anything does come good with lo- love bombing, but it's like cheating. It's like you get over it, but it's like yeah. abuse and like fucking microaggressions like that shit is sits with you forever. So like <laughs> that's do, not the I biggest red flag. I do want to like say like it's so the hinge review. No. <laughs> like I would be I would have bad reviews. I'd be a one star. Be like she walked out on me because I had a phobia of escalators. I left, <laughs> I, I left a fucking date. Like I've ghosted so many people. I just I don't know. Like and I do want to make space for people who have had bad dating experiences, who have been cheating on, maybe that's the worst trauma they've ever gone through in their lives. I fucking envy you. Yeah. But like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I just think we need to like put it into like a little bit of perspective because Get like, part check. of dating is learning about people and how to navigate relationships. And maybe you're the problem sometimes. I don't fucking know. No, but but I think you fucking nailed it. The biggest fucking problem with this is treating people like this capitalistic shit we have going on. Because Hinge, Tinder, they already look like shopping websites. It's already all so superficial with edited fucking Facetune fucking pictures. Yep. And then you're going to review people based on how they performed in a date it's like let's just like think back it's like these women like what they're wanting to do is not waste their time right they don't want to waste their time they want to read the guy's reviews how he was already instead of figuring it out for themselves when it comes to sexual assault and predators yeah i mean that's a good thing to fucking figure out before you go meet up with a stranger google their records still advocate for that but in terms of like you know, it was just a bad date or he didn't want to wear a mask or like whatever. It's like, like, I don't know. It just like takes away like autonomy and like you're really like jeopardizing like the trajectory of your life, like not And it dilutes, it dilutes the serious claims. Like it dilutes the real essay, the real abuse. Why are we, why do we start this? 
Like women are already like told, oh, it's gossip. Oh, it's hearsay. Oh, it's whatever about real ass claims. So then we're going to talk about love bombing and we're going to dive into <laughs> more ourselves. Like, you right. know, like we're missing the point. The plot is gone. We are so far. Deep. And again, people eat this shit up on the Internet because it's like, oh, Caleb was here. He was in the with this bitch and then he DM this bitch. And so it's like this content is going to have a lot of views. And again, people know what they're doing when they post TikTok. Yeah. Let's just yeah. all remember that. Exactly. And, and I think they have the intentions to go viral. But so I want to talk a little bit about this, Caleb. Now, there was some that I read in that Glamour article that talked a little bit about how like the Caleb she was referring to was a little bit different than the West Elm Caleb. Like there's two Caleb's allegedly. And in the comments, you do see women commenting, oh, I've dealt with this Caleb before. Like apparently he's dealt with numerous women, just like the other guy in the defamation lawsuits, whatever. Lovely. Personally, I'm not for doxing. I don't give a fuck what Caleb looks like. I don't live in New York. I didn't want to research into that any further. Can you explain um, to me what doxing means? So Yes, for those listening who don't know what doxing is or aren't chronically fucking online, doxing is pretty much giving out like their address, like where they work, like giving personal information that kind of like puts them at jeopardy. Got it. And everything like that. Yeah, so I want to go into a little bit about doxing and witch hunts. So we're going to talk about Caleb like a little bit. This okay. West, whichever West Elm Caleb it is, because there's two, I don't fucking know. And then we're going to talk about a little bit more with doxing and other cases. So this is from the Rolling Stone. The Rolling Stone covered this because it went so fucking viral. And it's called the West Elm Caleb Dating Club. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Do you want it's me to huge. read it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right, guys, here we go. I'm still like, I can't. My mind is still on the fucking. What would Khadija say about I, that? Like, I feel Khadija like she has to have had a video essay about this. Has to. Anyways, okay. In the case of West Elm Caleb, his doxing was swift. Creators who hadn't even gone on dates with him were quick to share screenshots of his profile and even his last name. Of course, since his place of work is part of his widely spread nickname, he has become the target of an online harassment campaign. Now, with his own social pages either hidden or deleted, West Elm's social media comments have instead been filled with anti caleb sentiments. The comments are full of jokes as well as cries for the designer to be removed from his job. Many of those informal petitions to dox him have come from the creator's story of getting two unsolicited dick pics from West Elm Caleb without ever having met him in person. He supposedly ghosted her too. As he did in the stories from these women, Caleb has become a ghost online. If he even had a significant presence to begin with. In less than a week, a person who seems to be a pretty normal 20-something single has become a symbol of something larger, a punching bag meant to represent the billions of brief but bad exes those perpetuating an online harassment campaign against him have likely experienced themselves. Wow. Woo! Wow. And I just want to say, like, unsolicited dick pics are sexual harassment. But in this case, I don't know which creator they're talking about. But what's a little concerning to me is... Getting two unsolicited dick t pics from West Elm Caleb without having ever met him in person, then he supposedly ghosted her too. I'm confused though, because if you didn't want these unsolicited dick pics, why are you being ghosted by him? You know what I'm saying? Like, wouldn't you block him? Like, what? how would he ghost you as well? Like, that it's not lining up for me. Yep, yep. That's <laughs> not lining up for me either. No, it is not. I just think like, we should all just take a good look in the mirror and like understand like like what's happening <laughs> like the fact that west elm caleb is in rolling stone and like like a fucking like phenomenon to be like analyzed like this shit is crazy you guys i think this is why i want to be single and don't want to date like honestly because this is like and again, it's like as if it's not hard enough, as if there's not enough like a mass fear in this world. It's like our relationships are like being jeopardized because of like how chronically online we are, how much people are like, it, it's just terrifying, Fiji. 
Fiji. Yeah, it, it, it's bad. And we're going to get into another one. So he's not the only right. um, victim, I don't know, like whatever of this couch doxing. Guy. Which one? You've never heard of Couch Guy? Oh, my God. Okay, she's not chronically online as, as much as I am. The rest of us. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming if you guys are watching this, you may have heard of Couch Guy. So Couch Guy was doxxed as well this is a little bit different this is more of an internet sleuthing story versus as much of a like dating experience whatever so i found this article written by the couch guy his real name is robert mccoy which he's gone public with now so it's okay to say it and he said i'm the couch guy here's what it was like being investigated on the internet that's the name of the article and just for some background on september 17 2021 his long-term girlfriend surprised him her friend took a video and posted it three days later to her 200 followers and the video went viral so the first commenters lauren's close friends had very positive things to say but soon strangers whom the video was less well received began commenting criticizing his i'm gonna read it from his person criticizing my reaction time or being or my being seated on a couch next to friends who happen to be of the opposite sex. Quote, girl, he ain't loyal. Red flag. He didn't get up off the couch and jump up and down in excitement. Bro, if my man was on that couch full of girls, capital letters, I'm walking back out the door. As commenters accusing me of infidelity rolled in, the video quickly became the topic of a fierce online debate, a la the dress. Remember the dress debate? Is it blue and gold? Or is it white and gold? Yeah, I ate that shit right up. Yep. I, an ordinary college sophomore, so he's young, became TikTok's latest meme, Couch Guy. (coughs) TikTok users made parody videos. American Eagle advertised a no-effort Couch Guy Halloween costume. And Rolling Stone, E! Online, The Daily Show, and The View all covered the phenomenon. On TikTok, Lauren's video and the hashtag Couch Guy, respectively, have received more than 64 million and 1 billion views. While the Couch Guy meme was lighthearted on its surface, it turned menacing as TikTok users obsessively invaded the lives of Lauren, our friends, and me, people with no previous desires for internet fame, let alone infamy. Would-be sleuths conducted what Trevor Noah jokingly called quote, the most intense forensic investigation since the Kennedy assassination, end quote. During my tenure as couch guy, I was the subject of frame-by-frame body language analyses, armchair diagnosis of psychopathy, comparisons to convicted murderers, and general discussions about my bad vibes. Now, I also just want to mention, again, this is a video set to some song where, like, essentially she comes in to surprise him. He's on the couch with these couple of women, and he, like, stands up really quick. People are like, oh, my God, he's cheating. Oh, my God, da, da, da. There's been other doxings and similar versions of people who ask specifically not to dox people, such as the who the fuck did I marry TikTok thread. And also Baby Reindeer, which I keep fucking bringing up. I love the show. Beautiful, like, uh, story about, like, how, you know, trauma isn't linear. Healing from trauma isn't linear, whatever. He specifically asked, do not dox my soccer People found her on TikTok, you know, doxed her, like whatever, put her face out, all of those things. So these are either people who have shared their story because they want to share their story. You know, like nonfiction has always been a fucking genre. People change names, whatever, like they did in Baby Reindeer. And then this guy, his girlfriend, I forget if it's his girlfriend or his friend, just posted this innocent video to 200 followers, was not looking for any sort of feedback became internet sleuths insanity. So, let's talk about it. (laughs) Bitch, I am absolutely speechless. But this, this, this is a TikTok thing. Because this didn't happen on Instagram before TikTok was a thing. But frame by frame body language analysis. Yes, that's the part that got me. It has TikTok written all fucking over it because at the end of the day, like everyone is just way too much online. So essentially his girlfriend walked into the room and the way he stood up when she walked in is what made people think he was was sitting next to girls. 
Right. And people were saying like, oh, maybe his arm was around this other girl. Maybe. He okay. Was I like, I did know about this. We yeah. talked about this before. I think it's so crazy. I think it's so ass backwards. And I don't know this guy at all, but like, I kind of do feel bad, honestly. I feel bad as well. And I feel bad for her too, the girlfriend too, because he said like the original comments on the video were people that knew the couple intimately. Like they were like, oh my God, this is so cute. Like whatever, like she surprised him, like da 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 da. But the thing about TikTok that like you said is different from Instagram is the algorithm and how it's pushed to so many like strangers. It's not like Instagram where it's more just the people you follow. So yeah, it's, I think it comes like these internet sleuths, these true crime people, these people that are so ready to dissect anything. And that is in it of itself an issue. And then the like doxing in, in the public court of opinion and everything like that is also an issue. Like I mentioned, like who the fuck did I marry? She shared her story willingly, but said, please don't find him or whatever. Same with baby reindeer. So it's, it's this weird dichotomy of like, People are not asking for it and we are intruding. That to me is some sort of abuse. Right. And I also think like it starts as one thing, but now it's like so far beyond him and like all about this like cheating shit and like we need yeah. to catch the cheaters. We have the yep. Facebook groups. We want a hinge review site. Like it's not even about him anymore. Like this is very much like he's a symbol. Like, fixated entertainment like and yeah. honestly that's crazy that it um it got posted to 200 followers like that's like if we posted a video and it got well but meanwhile we're trying to go fucking viral for our <laughs> know, content we... like whatever and it's not and again like i think capitalism comes into play because like these social media platforms are social spaces where like things trend whatever and then you see things like american eagle jumps on top of it like that part these, like, why <laughs> but it, it capitalism makes sense. i mean they have like gen z or like millennial social media managers that are seeing this trend happen and they're like oh let's capitalize off of this but it's like what we're missing in all of this is like the humans and like their exactly. right to privacy and it's like what is that line where you like share everything to social media like you know like are you subject to any of I don't know like I think couch guy like honestly hearing this article from his own personal like is opinion wild. was really interesting and I I kind of fuck with him for that like you know, like, at least maybe this is the future of his influencer career. Like, you never fucking know. But I, I don't know. It, Caleb disappeared. Couch Guy wrote this article. It's scary. It's like I, all this is like exactly what you said. It's like we're taking it too far and not remembering that there's not remembering that there's human beings like actually being affected. Same thing with the fucking the loyalty test like you're re not remembering like these are human beings lives bro right. like and, and, and these are people that aren't asking for it which is like right weird. Which is like the easy. loyalty testing at least they're asking for it but i think they, they go hand in hand with so much of this content online it's like this vicious cycle that feeds each other oh my god he might be cheating oh my god now you're conssciously looking out for it like it's a lot. It's too much, dude. It's and I just want to say, much. too, to any of our followers, listeners, whatever, whoever me and Autumn talk about on here, like, we share our dating experiences, and I've shared things about, like, my abuser, whatever. If any of you ever fucking dox them or any shit like that, like, you're blocked from every, like, don't do that. And I feel like it's so crazy that people have to fucking say those things. Like, because people like the... um who the fuck did I marry and baby reindeer? Like they're sharing these stories so people can like learn about trauma and learn about like, I thought baby reindeer was super helpful and like being like, oh, my experience is not alone. Like it's what the purpose of it is. Right. But when you guys insert yourself and you take something that is meant to be art or meant to be healing in terms of like group therapy and turn it into a winch hunt, that is terrifying. Please don't ever do that to us. <laughs> Please don't ever do that to us and don't do that to anyone in general. It's it's right. honestly fucking terrifying. The internet scares the shit out of me, dude. And here we are. So. Here here the fuck we are. So, okay, this brings us next into like I kind of want to talk about are these groups echo chambers? So, 
we talked about that it's this vicious cycle. There's a lot yeah. going on here. And I want to return to that article that we talked about at the beginning by Maria Ver- Verena Peters from the Whisper Networks to hashtag Me Too, framing gender gossip and sexual harassment. And this part specifically is not as much about like TikTok and all of these things. It's more about like online feminism and trending hashtags like Me Too. Like, yeah. you know, when fem- feminism was popularized online, but you want to read it? Despite the risk and hostility on Twitter, the digital sphere was still largely understood as a relatively safer and easier space to engage in feminist discussions than in participants' online, offline context. Moreover, we found that experiences of engaging with and developing feminist consciousness online actually created a range of clashes in their everyday relationships with colleagues, family, and friends. The tension between their online feminist community, where they could share views and opinions and get support, contrasted strongly with experiences of dismissal by significant others in their everyday lives. The impression that social media is a safe space may, on one hand, be rooted in the stigmatization of communication among women as gossip in offline social situations, and on the other hand, in the specific demographic of these platforms. As early as 2010, Johanna Blakely pointed out during one of her TED Women talks that the majority of social media platform users were females and that the amount of time women invested in these platforms daily was much larger than that invested by men. Current statistics on social media used by gender Pew Research Center show that this is still the case today. I mean, that makes sense, that last part. Yeah, so I kind of want to talk about this in terms of, like, these echo chambers, right? Because, like, I think influencers online and social media in general, like, gossip, like, anything that women dominate gets a certain amount of, like, criticism more than, like, male-dominated spaces. And I think these spaces are really good for, like, blowing up things like Me Too and all of that, but, like especially with TikTok where the algorithm is so hyper-focused on like what you've been watching, you become in this echo chamber of just other women consuming the same type of content with you, as you that you forget that this is so public and what the public repercussions of this may become, especially outside of the context of like essay and abuse and all of those things. So I don't know, like when she talks about like, the the line between like real life and social media kind of like what this whole podcast is about like where reality and online like you know collide like it's how do we navigate this yeah I think it's like it's like what we always say it's like there is a lot of like benefits with social media like grant it's like the me too movement like wouldn't have been what it was if there wasn't for social media like we can all agree on that But I do think that, like, as a society, like, we kind of just, like, ruin things. Like, we have the opportunity, we have the technology and the platforms to, like, make real social change. And, like, a lot of people are doing it. But also we have all of this shit. And it's, like, fucking with our interpersonal lives, which, like, it shouldn't. Like, it's very, like, we should handle, like, social media is different than real life. Like, we all say that. It sounds corny, but it's, like, y'all, like, are forgetting that. And, like, almost treating it like, like, I don't know, it's, like, entertainment, but it's, like, these are influencers. There's a real human being. It's not a character in your favorite show, like. Right. Like, the difference between, like, true crime and, like, listening to these stories, like, people who actually research investigators, da-da-da. But it's, like, because, again, the systems are broken, so many women result to, like, these sorts of, like, platforms. And I, I, it's, like, who is supposed to, like, manage this? Like, it's. It's like social media is like if you had like a whole group of all these people in one room and just saw what the fuck happened. Like, is it up to the platforms to create these guidelines, whatever? And then we get into conversations of like TikTok that censors like essay and all those things. That's why people use the term grape, like instead of like whatever, like and then that becomes right. That becomes difficult for people to even like seek any sort of like healing. Like it's just so. Yeah. They censor messy. the wrong shit constantly. I mean, yeah. YouTube demonetizing what's his face was great. Yeah. We're not saying his name anymore because we yeah. kind of think one of our episodes God. didn't get pushed yeah. out as much because we mentioned that motherfucker. So never again. Mm-hmm. But um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm honestly scared. I do think it's kind of on the platforms, though. But I also do like I think social media is so big. It's kind of an impossible task to make sure it's like good all the time. Like and it's like this is all human error shit. Like humans suck, bro. Honestly. And it's like it gives this like false illusion. I think when we all like get together online And we're, like, advocating for something. Like, there's this, like, social justice, this hashtag feminism, like, whatever, that, like, we're really making a change. But, like, again, we're at the, like, subject of these, like, algorithms and of these greater social media platforms that are run by usually, like, white men or whatever. Right. That can censor things. And then it's, like, who's actually escalating it to be, like, effective in any sort of, like, court or bigger discourse? Like... When it's situations that, like, do matter, like, those people are necessary to gather people outside of this platform and take it to law and, like, all of those things. But, like, in this, like, mess of us being, like, oh, my God, we can make real change. We have real activism online, a lot of it being performative. People get, like, confused about what the fuck activism is, I think. Right, because it's changed so much now. Like, posting on your Instagram story is not activism. And especially if, like... Your followers are hit, too. It's, like, it's still good to draw attention to things. But I remember, like, I always think I'm, like, damn, well, it's, like, I need to post this somewhere else. Because, like, honestly, my followers are not, like, really the problem. Like, you know what I mean? At least not yet. But, like, I know. It's, like, activism looks differently today. Some of it's good. Some of it's not so good when it comes to social media and all that. But, yeah, it's terrifying. Okay, so going off of that. I want to play this one TikTok and get a little bit into who should we be scared of? Because going back to the very beginning of this episode, we played that TikTok, that viral trend. Who would you rather be trapped in a forest with, a man or a bear? That was like four hours ago, damn. (laughs) Right, so fucking long ago. We're, We're circling back. We're bringing it back. I fucking promise. Let's watch this TikTok right now. Okay. The fact that more than one girl... In my comments, I said, oh, hey, by the way, if you're going to start dating in Dallas, make sure you join the Are We Dating the Same Guy Dallas-Fort Worth Facebook page. (laughs) What? What? I'm scared. I'm scared. Okay? I moved to a big city. I'm excited to start dating because I'm from the middle of nowhere, small town. Every male there is my cousin, and that's frowned upon. I get here, and you guys are like, oh, yeah, just make sure you join this Facebook group to make sure we're not dating the same guy, but have fun. (laughs) What? No. No, no, this is scary. I'm scared of you guys. I'm not you guys, but the men. I feel like at the very end when she was like, I'm not scared of you guys. I'm scared of the men. Yes. I was like, bitch, are you serious? Are you sure? Because I, I'm not really sure that's who you need to be scared of. Maybe in this specific situation. Like when she said I'm that, I'm so BG. happy you feel the same way because even the way that she said it, she was like, "I'm scared, not of you guys, of the men." Like she it was caught herself. Like she was like quick apologizing because girl code, you know. The whole video, I was like, "Oh yes!" Like this girl, like she gets it. She was like, "She was like, I'm scared, not of you guys, of the men." And then quickly ends the video. I'm like, "Girl, you're scared of them too. It's okay. Yeah, you can say it." It's okay. But it's like even how we talk about like in your whole journey and hating men and everything like that. It's like men are the easy fucking scapegoats for everything. Yeah. Like with all of this stuff because patriarchy, because they have been, they are the ones in between the end to justice. Ah, da, da, da. But we're at a place of more privilege. We have bigger voices than we used to have. Men can also be victims of a lot of stuff. And as we talked about in this episode, there's a lot of like fucking male victims as well. Yeah. So I want to go into bringing it back again to this article that was in Glamour inside the secret Facebook group where women review men they've dated by Jamie Kahn. Jamie Kahn had like interviewed this person named Dina. Their real name isn't Dina, but that's what they go by. And they're in this Facebook group. And it says, though Dina enjoys being in the group, she has had some reservations. Quote, sometimes you see people posting, if he wanted to, he would, about paying for things or picking you up in an Uber, she says. But I think you run into the problem where it can be this echo chamber of men have been pushing us around for so long, we're going to give it right back, end quote. Dina's comments touch on a common debate. Would are we dating the same guy be considered appropriate if the sexes were reversed? (laughs) (laughs) No, it wouldn't, bitch. Interestingly enough, 
This thought exercise was put to the test when a male-centric group called Are We Dating the Same Girl NYC, which is where the Caleb stuff started, <laughs> materialized. The Facebook group used the same community guidelines nearly verbatim and even added a disclaimer that the group was directly inspired by its predecessor. But when the original group caught wind of its male counterpart, Part, an overwhelming number of comments said it was disgusting and unacceptable for men to post photos, screenshot dating profiles, and discuss women in this way. While well, a few joked that now all of their boyfriends were going to find out about each other, plenty called them incels. You guys, you guys, <laughs> this is so true. It would never fly to have a fucking are we dating the same girl? There's no way. But yeah. it's like we 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 think what we do is okay. It's it's so fucked because like the power dynamics are clearly there. Like women, it's scarier for us to date men. Not as scary for men to date women. Like I feel like we can all agree to that. We can men all also, agree on that. Like men are also, I think, ignorant to a lot of this stuff. And they're also so quick to be like, oh, it's the same for guys. Like, oh, da, 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 which can be very fucking irritating because it minimizes the experiences of women. But at the same time, I think that women are taking on this like patriarchal act of things where like we're mimicking what men do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, instead of finding the empathy and the connection and all of those things and building a greater society. Yeah. We are becoming them. Right. Bitch, you're so smart. Like, I just had an <laughs> aha moment. You really are, a bitch. Because that, I think it's so hard for people to see. And honest to fucking God, before episode 50, Sprinkle, yeah. Sprinkle, I think I would have been a lot different. I yeah. don't hate men the same way that I do anymore. So I am able to like see the light a little bit. And we're not saying that like, m like, like men suck. Like as a gender, like they do inherit. Maybe Fiji doesn't feel this way, actually. But I, in inherently yeah. like they're. Well, I think it's like, imp I think it's important to use the right language because I'm like, the more that I read and the more that I get into this stuff, like I'm like. It's not men, it's the patriarchy. Was the patriarchy founded by men? Were men in power? Yes. But men are also, like, you know, put down and oppressed by this patriarchy. Too. Just like women are. In different ways and maybe not as much. But when it comes to talking about situations of abuse or anything like that, even cheating. If a girl cheats on a guy most of his guy friends are going to be like, oh, well, you clearly weren't fucking her right. Oh, well, you did something wrong. Oh, you're being a pussy. Just man up. Like, don't cry about it. Like, whatever. All of that culture is very prevalent. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, like we, it's not, I don't know. It's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's so fucking hard. But I really think that the bottom line is, like, we need to learn, like, how to heal and how to, like, use our voice that's not through the patriarchy and not, like, doing the same things that, like, men have done to us. I don't think we will get better as a society if we continue to do so as much of it as it's fun. I know that it's fun to put down men. I know that it is. I used to get a high off of it in college. Like, I felt like, incredible and it's a journey but like ultimately like realizing that like men are affected as like just they're affected by the patriarchy too like they're not like not all men grow up and like want to be demons like a lot of them yeah. do but like not all of them a yeah. lot of them don't want to be demons a lot of them don't there's a lot yeah. of people in this world. Not all yeah. of them suck. And again, like, I keep going back to Baby Reindeer, bro, because I swear you need to watch it. But, like, it's a story of, like, an, a man's experience with abuse. And, like, it involves, like, a woman predator as well. And, like, a man predator too. But, like, you know, just because we're women and we have been oppressed in a lot of senses does not mean that we're on this pedestal of, like, angelic, like, away from being predators or abusers as well and a lot of this stuff that we talked about in this episode like doxing people like I, it's just I, I think you know the defamation cases I want to be careful because like 
it, it's such a fine line, but it, I don't think we need to have things break down by gender anymore. Like, I think we should be beyond that. We have non-binary people. Gender is a spectrum. It's not working, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's not working. And I still think that I still would rather be alone with a bear than a man. But you can feel that way. And also understand. But would you rather? Okay, wait, let me ask this. Would you rather be alone in the woods with a bear, a man, or the are we dating the same guy group chat? (laughs) Probably still the bear, bro. Right. I don't want to be with those fools either. (laughs) No, like, or me now I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, okay, but maybe the man though, especially because like we have stripper training. Like, I feel like I could like not finesse him for money, but like finesse him for my life. Like, I think like if he was going to kill me, that's what I'm saying. I think we need to. Okay, maybe it wouldn't be a bear. I don't know anymore. I think we need to reassess what we define and what the connotations that we put on the word a man and the yeah. population like you know what I'm saying because like I think it's gone too far and like, I, I think, really do and when you say men are trash men are trash all men suck all men suck I don't want to date any men they all suck they all suck like you guys like we all want to manifest our dream life but it's like that that it's like that is We're so manifest- detrimental you're manifesting that too and it's like you really, maybe it starts as kind of a joke, like, oh, yeah, I know, like, men are cool, but, like, a lot of them suck, so it's, like, men are trash. But then it's, like, you start to believe, like, genuinely, like, you hear the word man and you kind of throw up a little bit. Yes. It's, like, that's really sad, and I get that, like, like a lot of men are, like, horrible and they're abusers, but it's, like, there are women abusers, too, and, like, it's right? just... Right, and I think we need to be open To believing that there are good men and open to seeing men as whole human beings. Because I think me right now, like, I have a man living with me who's a gay man who is one of my very close friends. I have a man that I'm in an intimate relationship with. I have a brother. I have a dad. Like, I have men that humanize men for me. So, like, I think we need to all, like, reconsider what we think of when we think of men and open ourselves up to the opportunity that not all men are bad while still being vigilant in considering that some of these men are bad, just like some women are fucking bad as well. (laughs) I'd say we end it right there, bitch. (laughs) The way you said, while still, (laughs) obsessed. Because it's it's annoying as it is. It's a fucking yes and conversation. Like this shit, you cannot think about anything black and white. Like at the end of the day, like like humans are the root of all evil for <laughs> sure. But why are we gendering it? Period. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Okay, guys. Well, that about does it for all of the research, everything about this topic. We're going to quickly, briefly Wrap it up with what we are so wet, so dry, and still a little bit confused about the topic because our opinions are subject to change. <laughs> yeah, emphasis always. on these court cases because we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> we don't know the ultimate. Or have, and, maybe have all the info. So Right, just all allegedly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you guys are still with us, please drop a comment. I really hope you made it to the end because context is crucial. Yeah, if you guys are still <laughs> listening, um, comment the word, comment confused. under this episode so i'll go first i'm so wet honestly like i'm exhausted i'm exhausted this is a lot (laughs) we took us on a fucking journey but i'm wet about like not to to our own horn stroke our own dick rub our own clit but i am wet about our ability to see things as like you know, in a duality context and like trying to bring as much information into the picture as possible. I really hope that people do listen to the whole episode because it's Yeah, because we really had a revelation at the end, ho. (laughs) Right, I'm saying, but like, I think there should be more of this. Like I'm wet about like these types of conversation as opposed to like short form TikTok content where things are just taken out of context and people sleuth. Um, I also am like overall still wet about like me too. And like the progress that we have made and being in more of a privileged society, um, that still has a long way to go, but we've come a long way. And I think sometimes we need to like, remember that. And I also am wet about us 
working on our journey and seeing men's humanity because I think that it's helped me a lot in my personal relationships. Yeah, I definitely like echo all of that. I'm all wet about that as well. I would say I'm really wet slash interested to see what Khadija would say about all of this. Like genuinely. I'm definitely wet about like the couch guy making like that POV article like you said. Like I really do like that like he was able to kind of like share his side. And like I'm wet that like there are people out there that aren't chronically in these Facebook groups. Like I don't think we've lost everyone in society. But, like, the overwhelming majority is scary, and especially, like, in our age group and, like, things like that. Like, those are very much the people online. And even older, too, and younger. I don't know. It's fucking everyone, bitch. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm I'm wet that, like, we have come to a point where, like, we are able to even, like, discuss these topics, like, without fear because, like, it can be a little bit scary and, like, I never want some, like, I'm, I'm fucking, like, my biggest fear is like someone being like, oh, well, they don't believe women or Autumn doesn't right, believe taking women. taking us out of context. And but it's like, like, and that's a fear for a reason because like I, I so like incredibly do. Like it's like such a part of my like fucking identity. Like, you know, so I'm just like, but I, I do think it's important to see all sides. So I'm what about that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm dry about, like, honestly, pretty much everything from this whole, like, episode. It's a lot. Like, I'm dry about the groups in general. I'm dry about the defamation lawsuits because I think those are fucked up, like, you know, especially when they're targeted towards women. I'm dry about, like, the term gossip and, like, how it's used against women with, like, patriarchy. Also, overall, just dry about breaking things down by the lines of gender, because I feel like it's time to move beyond that. And it's even so though difficult. we do that, sometimes. we do it so much. But I think like it's hard because like by the end of the episode, I feel like we usually bring it to a line where we're like provide context and we're like we should move beyond it. But like we're engaging with these like common articles, TikToks, whatever that, that are, are still doing it. engaging in the lines of gender. So it's like a little bit iffy. I'm dry about, like, algorithms and echo chambers, dry about doxing, fucking dry about baby reindeer and them. Do- Ugh, I loved it so much. It was so fucking good. Um, but, yeah, dry about a fucking lot in this one. Yeah, I would say I'm just, I'm dry about how, in general, like, you can have something that, like, maybe did come with good intention of, like, these Facebook groups of, like, trying to protect women and, like, giving warnings like this man essayed me this man sexually harassed me and then it like it turns into like something like the couch guy where you're over analyzing like like an innocent person that wasn't even yeah. trying to like get attention to himself I'm so dry about the fucking um loyalty testing like that to me is just I yes. am so dry about that I'm dry about creators that make money off of it I'm dry that like it's even an option for people to go to and like maybe someone's done it and like it was a good experience for them and they felt empowered like okay but I just think that like overall it's like that's something that we've come to do because we have the internet now is a little bit fucking toxic and crazy but yeah the whole episode was a shit ton of dry so echo everything you say to you said too like (laughs) echo we're creating an echo chamber in us um (laughs) yeah ew stop why do i keep saying that i am confused i'm still confused about a law honestly because i'm confused about the law (laughs) and where these lines go because i don't think the courts in the political system has been ready for any sort of like social media or any of this stuff i think in a lot of ways it's so beautiful and that it's like having us reassess all of these systems but in a lot of ways it's also like dangerous like i almost feel like we need to just fuck the constitution and write a whole new one because there's a whole lot like laws of privacy, whatever. Um, I'm also confused a little bit about, okay, like the idea that like some of these are like sub niche internet communities, but they've become mainstream on a a platform like TikTok that is like garnered attention through like um, The View and like Trevor Noah and like NPR and all of that. Like I still feel like so much of media is sensationalized, but like with it being on a public platform like TikTok, it goes viral for a reason. People are liking it, like whatever. Even us creating this episode, we are drawing more attention to these things and these people that have been doxxed. And like, I realized that in doing that, 
we might be having more people go view who was doxxed and all of those things, which creates an even bigger fucking paradox. You know what I'm saying? So that is really confusing about me, confusing to me because I'm like, how do we engage with this media? And I don't know if whistleblow is the right term, but like kind of provide context on how we should like digest it at the same time as not like sensationalizing it. Yeah, I totally get it. And I think this is what I'm going to say. And I'm going to bring it all back to the fucking mommy fucking TikTokers. Okay. There was a, there, I, it's like, okay, it, it's so hard because you don't want to draw attention to that stuff. However, I think it's extremely fucking educational when a fucking whole-minded, smart individual comes online like Khadija, like Kiki channel that I mentioned, yeah, and like does move. draw t- attention to maybe these cur- controversies and shit, but it's like, they're saying like what I feel is true as well, and so it's like, Cause then even there was like a mommy and me TikTok that I loved. I thought they were great. I was like, damn, they're so cute. This is everything. And then I saw this video and I, I didn't like follow them that much. So I didn't even know about any of this, but I was like, damn. So I'm like, it is important. And even though he's like, she blurred out the kids faces, like, but granted it's like people could see that video and go watch that. And it's like the child's being exploited and you're just perpetuating it. But, yeah. like, it's important. Like, you need to have the other side online. So it's, like, we yeah. just have to figure out a way. But for my confused, like, I'll just keep it short and sweet. I'm just confused about girl code in general. Like, I think it's yes. just become so confusing. I don't like the word girl code anymore. And it's just, like, it's sad because I do feel this, like, sisterly bond with like women of the world like I get why girl especially code is being like, like lesbian like your mom is yeah like, grew up mostly lesbian like I think <laughs> you know you've been drawn to that but it's like it get it, heterosexual culture is a different fucking culture when it comes to women right and it's just so I know this was all like this is like like straight fucking people you know yeah. And it's scary, but and it plays yeah. into the hetero pessimism of the gender wars and all of that. Like it's all I, I connected. hope that everybody like watches all of our other episodes because I think that helps with yeah. the text and stuff. But. Everything's a cause and effect, like literally, um, that we talk about. But yeah, I mean, I guess that's it for this episode, guys. And um, yeah, just please follow and subscribe. Like and comment and turn on post notifications on YouTube. We do drop episodes like every Thursday night or no, it's midnight on Thursdays, Eastern time. So yeah, it's, but it's technically Wednesday. Wednesday like, night, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we're tired. As I said, we do post polls on Instagram. We're on TikTok. It's all at So Wet So Dry. The O's are zeros. Also, we do want to spotlight artists and creators and small business owners. If you guys are listening and you have something that you want to promote, DM us or email us so what so dry at gmail.com or at so what so dry on Instagram. We would love to promote your art. Um, also at the description at the bottom of every single fucking episode, we have <laughs> listener support on Spotify. It is the only way that we currently <laughs> make any sort of money from this fucking podcast because we are both still capitalists nine to five employees so please if you feel so inclined if you love this episode subscribe with the link <laughs> support we got 99 cents 4.99 or 9.99 can i get someone please anyway we love you so much thank you for listening we will catch you in the next episode bye, bye.